So, principles of choosing a life partner. Like I said, is the biblical principles that I'm dealing with. The biblical principles of choosing a life partner, not the world's principles. So, we've looked at intimacy with God. We've looked at knowledge. We've looked at purpose. We've looked at work on yourself. We've looked at maturity. We've looked at making a list. That making a list is powerful. Powerful. A lot of people... A lot of people have been sending me messages about making that list. That is an eye opener, you know. Um, divine direction, um, spiritual homogeneity was what we discussed yesterday. Spiritual homogeneity, and that was also mind blowing. I presume, and very very important. So, the previous Jenny, welcome Jenny, welcome Solomon. The previous um, principles we've discussed already in part one part two, part three, part, let's say it was part four, so today is part five, and quite honestly, I didn't know I'll still be on number, spiritual homogeneity, it's still does number eight, so we're moving to number nine, okay, we, we did number nine, so yesterday, thank God we, we, we squeezed it in, parental and pastoral counseling, that video is already on the YouTube page, we're going to look at one principle, I call this principle my critical factor principle where I have some factors not so much that I think are very 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 critical to your choice of a life partner very very critical so I call that I call this principle my principle this is principle number 10 my principle so you can say this is Saints principle you know the critical factor of choosing a life partner all right so in this under this place or uh, the factors I listed here two critical things that both the man and the woman should take into consideration before they make a choice of who they'll spend the rest of their life with for the men for the men i tell the men look out for women that are teachable look out for women that are teachable very important very important because if you marry a woman that is not teachable, you marry a woman that does not listen to you, you are in for some wahala in that marriage. You are in for some serious wahala in that marriage. So I usually say, look for the to the guys, marry a woman that is teachable. And the scripture to support that, you can find in Ephesians chapter 5. Chapter 5, and there's, there's no way you, talk about, you teach about relationship and you won't get to Ephesians chapter 5. There's no way that will happen. So it's a critical portion of the scripture, you know. Verse um, 24. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let, so let their wives be to their own husbands in everything, not in some things, not in a few things. The Bible says, be subject to your own husband in everything. In everything. So that is Paul speaking. He said, let the wives be subject to their husband in everything. Their own husband. And whenever I, I read out this scripture, I, thought, I speak from this scripture. That's something I, I keep saying to the wives. Be subject to your own husband. That's what the Bible says. But you find a lot of wives are subject to other women's husbands. It says they are most, they are subject to their bosses at work or they are subject to their pastor more than their husband you know that is error that is error i understand spiritual positioning i understand the place of the pastor you know i'm a pastor but i teach the scriptures rightly divided i don't teach men's doctrine in fact i run away from men's doctrine you know i avoid it be subject to your own husband you should be obedient and more submissive to your husband far ahead of your pastor. Yes, I said it. And you can quote me anywhere. I'll defend it. I'll say that again. You should be more submissive and more subject to your own husband than your pastor. Do you know that God even submits to the husband's authority over the wife? Yes, God. He does that. I can show you one scripture quickly. If you will let me, Numbers 30, or verse 1 or verse 2. 
Listen carefully. If a man makes a vow to the Lord or swears an oath to bind himself by some agreement, he shall by no means break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds from his mouth. See verse 3. Or if a woman makes a vow to the Lord and binds herself by some agreement while in her father's house, in her youth, meaning she's not yet a legal adult, she's still under the covering of her father. See what the Bible says should happen. Verse 4. And her father hears her vow and the agreement by which she had bound herself, and her father holds his peace, meaning the father says nothing. He didn't say anything to that. As you know, you made a vow, fine. And he keeps quiet. See what the Bible says should happen to her. The Bible says that she has bound herself and her vow will stand. Now see the next one. Verse 5. But, say, but if her father overrules her on the day that he hears. Verse 6 now said, verse 5 now says, then none of her vows nor her agreement by which she had bound herself shall stand. Are you seeing? God respects the male authority over a woman. God respects that. Every woman should get that clear. God respects that. So when the woman is not yet married, she is under her father's protection and authority. And God respects that. Imagine a woman makes a vow to God, her father hears it, and her father can overturn it. Her father can overturn it. And nothing will happen to the father, a man. Now see the, the next verse. Verse 6 now said, if indeed she takes a husband while bound by her vows or by a rash utterance from her lips by which she bound herself and her husband hears it and makes no response to her on the day that he hears it he shall make void her vow which she took and what she uttered from her lips that's verse 8. Once the husband hears and overrules, that is the end. That is how much God respects the authority figure over the woman. So back to our scripture in Ephesians chapter 5. That is why, see what Jesus was saying regarding the woman. He said the woman should be under subjection to her own husband even ahead of the priest see the next verse verse 25 he now said husband he now said verse 24 therefore just as the church is subject to Christ so let the wives be to their own and everything verse 25 husband love your wife just as Christ also loved his own bride the church and gave himself for her that he Christ might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. Christ sanctified the church with the washing of water by the word. That he, Christ, might present his bride to himself a glorious church, not having spot, nor wrinkle, or any such thing that but that she should be holy and without blemish. Are you seeing that? From this scripture, I teach what I term as customization. Every man wants to customize his wife, wants his wife to be custom made for himself. Every man wants that. So, because this is the same thing Christ does to the church. Christ custom makes his wife, the bride, by washing the bride, that is his church, using the word to prune the church, his bride, so that his bride might be just the way he, the husband, wants. It is a critical factor 
when it comes to relationship. It's a critical factor when it comes to relationship. And this is a factor that a lot of women are not aware of. They are totally oblivious of it. That is why they tend to react when their husband starts his customization. Just want to share. So Christ even does this for the church. And years back, I used to think that Christ is doing all of that to sanctify us, to make us holy, so that we can be presentable to God, his Father. Until one day, some years back, about 12 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, the Holy Spirit said, read that please well. And I did. And I found out that Christ does not sanctify us. Christ is not washing us to present us to his Father. He is cleansing us. He is washing us to present us, his bride, to himself. That is customization. He is making us the way he wants it. So, husbands do this in different ways and manners. They do that. They do that to their wife. So, every woman must understand it. So, when that process kicks in, they don't resist it. What really happens is that they resist it. They think that this man is too hard, that this man is fussy, this man is always giving instruction. Is he a god? Why must he command? Why is it this? No, 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 no. It's much, much beyond that. There's a particular way he wants you to be. There's a particular way he wants you to be. You know, I've heard complaints from a lot of women that are married. Like, eh, my husband is secretive. My husband doesn't tell me things. I don't know where things are. He still is. He hides his money. He's this and that and that and that and that. I said, I don't really blame the man. She said, eh, you should talk to him now. Is that what the husband and wife should we Shouldn't we want naked and not ashamed and blah, blah, blah. You know, I said, yes, all the scriptures you're putting is correct. Everything you're saying is correct. But, 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 a man will not open up until he sees that you're a bit of what he wants in his wife. That you're a bit of what he wants in a woman. Maybe in the past, you've been resisting customization. And usually when you resist customization of your husband, do you know what happens? You make the man think you're not loyal to him. Now listen, for those that are married, listening to me, and those yet to marry, it's something you need to understand. The ladies, listen to me. You know, a man's number one partner in the whole wide world should not be his dad, should not be his brother, should not be his best friend, it should be his wife. So, as, as the wife, when you are not playing that role for him, because it's a need, the man, it's a need in the man, he will constantly be looking elsewhere for that need to be met by hopefully not the other woman. You pray her that she be a man, but it might just be another woman. You should be his number one partner. You should be the help, meet for him. So, and to be the number one partner, you must show 101% loyalty to that man. He should not have any cause to doubt your loyalty. He should not have any cause to think that you are loyal to your family, that you are loyal to him. He should not have any cause to think that you are loyal maybe to your friends, then you're loyal to him. He should not, he should not, he should not cross his mind. It is something you de de deliberately as the wife or as the fiancé. You, you need to walk into the man's life deliberately. You make him so useless that without you, he can't survive. Yeah. Walk up to under his skin, be there that he cannot breathe it without you. And the only way you get to that point in his life is by showing 100% loyalty. And that loyalty comes from full submission. Yeah. And for you to be fully submitted, you must understand what I'm teaching. As a woman, you must be teachable. Whenever your husband wants to say something, keep your mouth shut and listen. Give him 100% attention. Your attention alone to him shows him that you think that anything that comes out from his mouth is important. Even if he's talking trash, be nodding. Mm. 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 Wow, 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 wow. 
you know, he'll feel like, you know, like one professor of knowledge, you know, you make him feel good. You know? Very, very important. Very, very important. You must be teachable. Don't be the kind of woman that is cantankerous. You know what, what, what Solomon said about the cantankerous woman? He said it is better to be at the corner of the roof. Corner, corner, not the whole roof. Maybe being on the roof is one. Then the corner of the roof than being in the same house with a quarrelsome, cantankerous woman. Because you will not even let the man talk. Talk less of even hearing his instruction. Even when you don't let the man talk, you're even far away from being teachable. So I tell guys, when you are dating that woman, when you are cutting her, this is one of the first things you need to look out for. You give her one or two instructions and watch how she does and carries them out. You tell her one or two things and watch her, what she does with that instruction. Very important. See what she does with the instruction. Will she discard it? Will she forget? No, usually, another thing that usually happens. I mean, I talk, talk with... When you, talk, when you talk to a lot of married men, one of the things they said is that they get so exas exasperated with this because they say they tell their wives this, that, 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 that. The next minute she has forgotten. One day I was with some pastors and we were discussing something. Uh, what we were discussing about uh, phone calls. <laughs> about phone calls. And one pastor said, ah, May I not call my wife again? That she doesn't pick her phone. And I said, Eh, hey, your wife is like that too. Yeah, I was also shocked because my wife is also like that. I'll come back and say, pick your call. The phone is called a mobile phone, meaning that you need to carry it. It's mobile. You need to carry it around. She said, ah, she was too busy with this. Ah, she did. Ah, she dropped it somewhere. So I used to think I was the only one that used to be so exasperated that my wife doesn't pick her calls. You know, and we had a laugh about it. Then there's something else a lot of husbands also complain about. is when they tell their wives, do this, do that. And somehow, they won't do it. And you ask them what happened. They'll be like, ah. They forgot. Ah, they didn't remember. He used to pain husbands. He pains us. Because any time I said, anytime your husband is speaking, listen. Be attentive. Pay attention. There's a way Pastor Sarah used to put it. She said, write it in your heart. Write it somewhere so you won't forget. Because when you make a man talk and talk and repeat and repeat things, you make him sound like a broken record. And husbands don't like that. So my, 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 my brothers, look out for this because if she doesn't hear and obey instruction, <laughs> I'm not saying that it, she cannot change the marriage, but it is not a good sign. It is not a good sign. You might spend a lot of years of exasperation, of, you know, being fed up, you know, and all that. I'm also saying that if she doesn't show that at the beginning, that you give up on her. No. You know, remember, as a husband, you need to be like Christ. And you ask yourself, if Christ gave up on you, how would your head be today? With all your wahala, did Christ give up on you? You know, as a husband, you don't give up on your pride. You just don't do it. You just need to ask for grace and strength. But what I'm saying is, but there are some cases of some women, naturally, they are stubborn. Naturally, they are rebellious. There are some, no matter what you do, mm -mm, they don't want to hear it. Why? They feel they cannot be controlled. I don't blame them so much because most of them grew up in a house where their mom, their mom was the controller general and their father were, you know, the quiet ones. So the mom was the one directing affairs in the house. So you won't blame the woman too much. If she grew up in that kind of home, because that's the only thing she knows, she, she, she knows, she knows of. But if she's willing to also subject herself to training, training of of her of her pastor or her mentor in church, and is willing to change, fine. But there are some that won't change. Let me, let me tell you a story. One of those days, I mean, this happened, I think, in 2008 or there about 2009. I can't remember which year. You know, we had evening service in church, and we closed after about eight or nine. And where church was, usually by that time there's traffic in the evening you know the traffic builds up from rush hour five six seven up to up to eight you know nine so to come out of church i had to join traffic because traffic was all the way you know the whole stretch of church so we joined the traffic and i was heading home you know i'm never taking up to you know 20 meters and um all of a sudden the car in front of me i just saw that an oncoming vehicle from the opposite side wanted to turn into a compound on our right 
And you know traffic now, every car was like bumper to bumper. And this car oncoming wanted to talk. The normal thing a rational person should do is you wait. When the traffic moves, you beg the other person to please wait so you can cut into your house. But the traffic was not moving. And this car, instead of waiting, turned and hit the car that was in front of the gate. And I wondered about it. I was like, it doesn't make sense. I was like, ah, was he sleeping or what? Was is he drunk? It's a, bit, a little bit too early to be drunk by that time. Why would you see traffic, cars bumper to bumper, and you still turn and hit a car on, on the oncoming lane? And before we could say Jack Robinson, the, the woman from the passenger side jumped out, went to the car. I mean, she hit, but it was the husband driving. And suddenly shouting at the driver. I mean, it doesn't make sense. It should be the man that you hit that should come down and shout at you. But you now jumped, you hit the car, jumped out, and you're shouting at the driver. And you're creating a scene. This is a woman. And your husband is in the car, quiet, not saying anything. And you're out there making all the noise. And I thought it was maybe it was a joke, maybe that you know, maybe something else happened. And I got curious. My curious self, I came down to actually know what was going on. And the one was screaming that he would deal with the guy. And the guy was like, Oh, madam, you hit me. And you're shouting at me. And the woman was screaming. And he got to a point, the man got another. The man now came down from his car. And the madam, what is wrong with you? And when he now came down, he now saw that there's the other, the, the driver in the car. He went to the driver and said, Why did you hit me? We are in traffic. Why did you hit me? But to cut a long story short, the woman was the husband. Apparently told the husband, Move, 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 move. And the husband was like, what, what am I moving to? Can't you see traffic? The woman said, move, move, move. And push the, the man to an extent that a rational man, well, I believe it was rational, moved his car and hit that man. So I got so curious. So I was looking at the husband in the car. He didn't even come out. I said, okay, what happened? He just shook his head, shook his head. You could see that the man is under the influence of the wife. Shook his head, see? Sorry, please forgive. Sorry, just this just this woman, I don't know, the way he, you could just see that he was, I mean, the woman has taken control of the man and the man did something so irrational. So the man, woman screamed, shouted, almost fought this man that they hit. Ha! And that's when he said, I saw a clear case of a cantacorous woman. And what was the woman's argument? That is their gate. She, she shouldn't have followed the other car in front of him, bumper to bumper. He should have left space. For the owners of that compound, whenever they come in, they will drive. I mean, this is like nine. The man did not know that you're not in your home yet. You know, nobody was thinking that. And you know how they drive in Nigeria. If you leave that kind of space, one car will blow from the back and cut you in, you know. And this woman was making noise, creating a scene. To the extent this man that he hit now actually got annoyed. Got so mad, I wanted to beat that woman. And they now started holding him, you know. But that's the kind of women that when you see that there is no help, I'm not saying don't marry her, leave her. And watch her. Let her change. Why? She's going to cause a lot of trouble for you in that marriage. Every woman must be subject to the husband for the husband to be able to carry out the work of customization on her. So his own wife will be a bit different from other women. So his own wife will be tweaked a little bit from other women. But for that to happen, woman, you need to submit a hundred and 10% to your husband so this work can be carried out. Now on the flip side, I now tell the woman, I now tell the women, one thing you need to watch out for as one of the principles. Yeah, Kelly, I said go to my Facebook page. Yeah, my Facebook account. That's why it's cracking. Go to my Facebook page, my Facebook page. Emeka, please help me paste that link again for them. Tell them to come to my Facebook page. My Facebook page is, is clearer. Emeka, please help me paste that link. Again for them. Come to my Facebook page. It's clearer. I'm not. I'm not live streaming on YouTube. YouTube is worse. So I stopped YouTube. It's worse. My Facebook page is clearer and better than this page. The one I'm pointing at now, than this page. Thank you. So, and I, and I tell the the male, the woman now, what to, to watch out for. And I tell the the, guy, the ladies now. The man is coming for your hand in marriage. There's something you should watch out for under my critical factor element. Watch out for a man that has a control point. Because 
in every man hear me well ladies in every man there are two animals as per metaphorically in every man two animals number one is the sheep number two is the lion every man has the sheep and the lion attribute just like our lord jesus christ is also referred to as the lamb and the lion of the tribe of judah every man has both attributes in them what do i mean by sheep a man can be a serious mu mu if you know the buttons to press in him he can move well well so men can so women has learned how to push that button that them their man has phd in mumurism he was given a bs a, a ba bachelor of arts in mumuology because these women are not manipulators they are great in the understanding of influence the power of influence so they have totally understood the power of influence that they use it on this man that the man is a full mumu and you might wonder hey what does it take so women might ask hey what does it take <laughs> to be to have that kind of influence on my on my husband simple it it only takes submission full 100 percent submission to your husband turns the man to the chief mumu yes submission i keep saying this you cannot be wiser than god any day you think you are wiser than god is the day your foolishness knows no new knew no bound I'm telling you, you cannot be wiser than God. God gave two sim one simple equa equation that has two parts to the socks for the success of any marriage. One equation but two parts. What is the equation? Wives be submissive, husbands love. But you notice he didn't talk to the husband first, he spoke to the wife to first submit. When a woman's submission is full the man's love for her know no bound. When a woman's submission is total, the love the husband has for her will know no bound. So that is the key to making your man a mumu. Once you can submit, that man can will eat out of your hand. I'm telling you. So, and I'll tell them, the woman, look out for this thing. Because in every man, he can be a sheep -o, if you know how to push his buttons and a man on the flip side has a lion attitude has the lion gone on his inside yeah you can touch an area that man the way he will react you yourself you won't believe it actually men that has had it up here when he reacts you you'll be shocked usually i'm not shocked because whenever a man reacts like that apart from men that i know that are crazy yeah there are men like that no doubt but but most men are not like that he's a man that has been i mean his his head is now underwater he's underwater that if he does not struggle to come out of water to breathe he's going to die so he reacts and you're wondering what's going on i've not seen this man like that you are the one that caused it you also touched some buttons that brought out the lion in him. Yeah. So, because of that fact, I tell women, one thing is also check in the man you want to marry is, does this man I want to marry have a point of control? Does this man I want to marry has, does he have a point of control? The man needs to have a man, not a woman. <laughs> I know I'm saying not a woman because I've, I've also seen the other case that the man's point of control is a woman. And I investigated further, and I found out that this woman that's controlling this man is a prophetess, a prophetess of one, one you know, white garments, prayer house ministry. And the man is seriously under the spell of this prophetess, you know, and that is, is sad. It's sad that the man's home was suffering. Because if prophetess have not said it, the man will not do it. It is the prophetess that, that controls and detects what happens in their home. A man's control point should be another man, not a woman. Somebody just sent me a question. How do you find out if he has a control point? Beautiful question. 
How do you know? How do you know if he has a control point? Very easy. He will constantly talk about the man. The man he talks about. He will constantly tell you, and as he's talking about the man, you should listen. Because the way he talks about the man will show if he respects the man. Will show if he honors the man. Not when he talks about the man and, you know, he doesn't make fun of the man, talks carelessly about the man. No, that man is not his point of control. A man's point of control is the man, the, this your husband or your fiance, fears. Not as per fear that he'll be shaking, no. As in he respects. Whatever that man says, you know, has a great impact on this, your, your husband. Is a man that can tell your husband, sit down, and he sits down. If your husband does not have a man that can tell him, hey, sit down here, and he sits down, that man is a loose cannon. Yeah, he's a loose cannon. He can go out of control at any time. Meaning he's unstable. That is why if you understand nuclear science, when you go to nuclear reactors, there are a lot of measures they have to make sure that all those their elements, I think um, plutonium and all those you know, new elements that they use for um, they use the nuclear reactor because they're highly dangerous elements. So they have to put them under serious, you know, control and serious things to hold them and make sure they are stable. Because especially like temperature, they have to put them at the right temperature. The tsunami is in Fukushima, if I remember, Fukushima in Japan, that affected a nuclear reactor very close to the sea. And for almost two, three years, the whole Japan was unstable because they are trying to, because the, the, the tsunami and the earthquake affected the, 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 the site, the, 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 the nuclear reactor site. It took them a long time to finally ensure that that site was in full control and fully stable. Because if not, that thing can just take off, explode, and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people will lose their lives. So, is a man. You must make sure he has a point of control. Yes, yes, Joyce. A headless man, a headless man is a dangerous man. I'll say that again. A headless man is a dangerous man. So, if you are saying, I'm in love, I'm in love, make sure that the man you are in love with has a point of control. He has a head, he has a covering. A spiritual covering because a headless man, <laughs> you know, then that man should also have a spiritual covering because a man that doesn't have a spiritual covering, when Satan shows up in his life, there's a there's some challenges that man will face. Yeah, of course, we'll be made kings and priests. Now I know some people, some pastors that preach that hey, what that God has made us kings and priests, that's a priest you can handle anything, anything that faces you, you can handle that access to God. True, true. Very true. Very true. But there's a balance to that. There are some situations that will face you. Your own anointing, your revelation and knowledge will not help you. You will need somebody that you have submitted to spiritually to just utter one word. Just one word. That devil clears. So as a, as a woman, these are the things you need to look out for in that man. Does he have a covering, a man that can tell him, hey, sit down, and he sits? A man that can control his craziness. Does he have a spiritual covering? Very important. Because will Satan knock on the marriage door? Yes, he will. The question is, does the man have the capacity to withstand it when Satan knocks or not? Very, very important. So as a man, make sure your wife is teachable. As a woman, make sure that the, your husband-to-be has a point of control. Make sure that your husband-to-be, your husband-to-be has a man he submits to. Very important. Another thing ladies, you, you should also look out for in that man is, like I said, this is my critical factor, is number two, is that man benevolent? What do I mean by benevolent? Is he kind? I have another slide, another principle where we'll talk about character and all that. We'll talk about one kind of kindness there, but it's the kind of kindness I'm talking about here. That's why I use the word benevolent. I didn't call it kindness. Watch out if that man, whether his hand is like this, 
You know what this means? Or his hand is like this. Don't marry a man that his hand is like this. You know what it is called. If you know what it's called, you can type it. What is it called? <laughs> what is it called? Akanchi. If that man is tight fisted, my sister, is there hope for you? <laughs> because we have faith and hope. I'll say, okay, oh, there might be hope and faith, but it is not a good sign. Especially while you are cutting. Stinko. <laughs> I like that stinko. <laughs> Especially when the man is cutting you. This is the point. This is the time where the man is crazy about you. He's crazy about you. This is when he should be the MU MU. This is when he's not even be thinking about thinking about how much he's spending. Expense is not the I mean, he should be thinking, he should spend no expense. I'm not saying he should be uh he should be Ade, Adenuga or Bill Gates or something. No. Even a brick layer at his level, he should know his level, the level he can give at. If he's not giving at that level, when you are cutting. And he's supposed to be crazy about you. <sighs> Let me be frank. My sister, put asterisks on it. And be watching. Because if he, if he's not benevolent when he's crazy about you, I'm not saying that he will change or he marry Job. No, but you know, in a, a wise man, my Podoc says something. He said that courtship brings out the best. While marriage brings out the rest. Courtship brings out the best. Marriage brings out the rest. So if his best is like this, the rest. <laughs> you don't want to know. You don't want to know what the what how what the rest is. What will be like. You know, you don't want to know. So as you are cutting or you are dating or whatever you're doing, stingy coco <laughs> <aradite. laughs> Whatever you're doing, ladies, watch out for that. Watch out for that. Watch out for that. There's, there's a story I like telling here. I know most of you have heard it. You know, as a copper, I was saving all my alawi when alawi was like, was like, was like, um, what, what would I say? It was like me. It was so precious then. Small money, or bets used to be massive for us. I was saving me, saving me, saving me, saving me, saving me. It took me months to save, to be able to buy. There was this, uh, those days of decks, they used to call it decks, as in cassette players, CD players, and all that decks, you know. I was saving because there's this particular model that just came out, a JVC, they used to call it J J JVC Cobra. When you press the remote, the console rises up like a Cobra and all the control buttons. Now, when you close it, the face is just like a, a snake. I mean, it was so sleek. You press the button, the control point just rise up, man. This would be so cool. I was saving money so I could buy it and send it to my wife. Then we are still, you know, friends and all that. And the day I finally bought the, the deck, man, you need to have seen me. Oh, I was I was feeling like one G that you know, see, like I built a house. <laughs> so I had to travel because my wife then was living in another state. I had to travel for about two hours to get to her state. Is it two hours? Yeah, two hours, one and a half, one and a half, two hours. So as I was leaving. Because I put the deck in my boot. I was leaving. I entered the car, see if you know. I was talking all this love and stuff. Okay, bye. No, da, da, da. Then we are done. And I got to my car to now finally, finally, finally leave. As if I was about to go, then I stopped. Came down. I said, oh, I forgot something. Went to my boot, opened my boot, then brought out the deck and gave her. I mean, the look on her face did it all for me. I was sat up. The pain of the, the sacrifice. The, the sweat of work doing the Alawi uh, of the job of the NYSE, everything disappeared. Just the look on her face. Why was I able to do that? Because I was crazy about her. I could do anything for her. Like the Bible says, For God so loved the world. The next thing the Bible said is that He gave what? His whole only begotten Son. Why? Love gives. Love gives. So once a man, a man's hand is like this, and he's saying he loves you, my sister, that love needs to be tested. We need to do litmus test on the love. Even James, speaking in James chapter 2, said something. He said, love, 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 love. That love without deeds, action, 
is not love. Why? True love has action in it. Why? Love is not a passive word. Love is actually an active word. So these are the things you need to check out. So I said, first thing you need to check is the man has an authority figure. The man is benevolent. Then the third, the man should be sacrificial. Remember, the man should love his wife just like Christ loves the church. Just like Christ loved the church. And what did Christ do for the church? Christ laid his life for us. Christ died for us. Christ laid his life for us. So a man should love his wife to the extent of even dying for his wife. And that is the truth. One that I was teaching some men, some, in something in this land, all the of them screamed, ah, die for my wife, ah, pastor, ah. I said, that's the truth. It's because you've not yet caught the revelation of love. Love sacrifices. Love is ready to die. And that is the truth. Agape love. You should be able to give your life in exchange for your wife. <laughs> then this story I had, um, robbers came to 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 some, to some people's house, you know, and uh, of course they, they were sleeping. But somehow when they knocked on the door, they knocked on the door and all that, and the wife woke up. By the time she got there, found that they were robbers. She ran to the room, woke up the husband, woke up the husband, honey, 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 robbers, 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 I'm robbers, I'm robbers. So he finally turned his sleep, woke up here, and they were like, what, 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 let me, let me see the word. They were saying robbers, robbers at the door. And the man got up with a jump. He said, robbers, swear, at the door. The man got up from the bed, went under the bed, and told the wife, honey, go and find out what they want. Tell them I'm not at home. He was under the bed. <laughs> under the bed. The husband telling the wife, go and answer the enemy. That is not a husband. He's, there is a selfish man that cannot give his life for his wife. So when while you guys are cutting, look out for those stuff. So I'm going to hurry now. The next point is character. Character, 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 character. Like I said, I'll talk about character. What do I mean by character? Watch out for the fruit of the spirit in that man and in that woman remember when we talk about spiritual homogeneity we said that, that both should be born again and how you know truly that somebody is born again is not by the person saying he's born again the bible says by this shall we know or who a christian is is by the fruit of the spirit first that person should not be afraid to love you know when you've been through past relationships, especially relationships that um, didn't go down well. What usually happens naturally is that you tend to build up walls because nobody wants to be hot. Nobody, nobody wants to be hot. So the natural reaction or response is that you build up walls. And um, if you build up walls and you get into marriage with walls, you will not give your best in that marriage and marriage is a relationship where you need to give your all where you need to give your love where you need to give your all you know growing up teenagers used to say we used to hear ladies say something ah i want my future husband to love me more than i love him women need to say that and you can understand why why they say that because they don't want to be hot so they want a man that will love them more than they will love him to protect their heart and their emotions that is understandable but true love is not a love of small giving a little bit of you to your spouse or to your husband or your wife true love is giving all so they then they now say okay fine let it be 50 50 love no 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 50 50 love 50 50 50 love is a selfish love true love true love is not 50 50 true love is giving a hundred 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 nothing short of hundred hundred you give your all to your spouse your spouse gives his or her all to you when that happens the two of you are mutually satisfied you know a hundred hundred love a hundred percent love from both parties is a love that's only possible from two givers it should be the kind of love where the man six to outgive his wife and his wife six to outgive her husband the two of you are constantly in in quotes competition it's not like it's a competition 
But it's as if you guys are competing for who will outgive the other. So usually, past experiences now make individuals not give their all, their best into any relationship because, like I said, they're afraid to be hurt. That's what the Bible says in First John chapter four. First John chapter four, verse eighteen. The Bible says there is no fear in agape, no fear. But guess what? There is fear in Eros. If your love is just built and hinged on just physical attraction, there will be fear in it. I'm not saying that attraction is not important. Don't worry. I have a slide on that. It is very, it is a principle. Attraction. I'll get there, so let me not start off now. But what I'm saying, that the love you have for your spouse should not be hinged on that at all. There is no fear. That is why when I talked about working on yourself to be a better mate for your future spouse, one of the things you need to work on is to break down those walls that you built up. Knock them down. Knock them down. The Holy Ghost is the lover of your soul. He's the doctor of your soul. Nobody else can handle your soul better than the Holy Ghost. Not Dr. Oz or One Love Doctor Online, no. The Holy Ghost is the one because he is the soul of the Trinity. The Father is the Spirit, clearly stated in John chapter 4. The Bible said that God is the Spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible said that Jesus is the express image of the Godhead. Jesus is the body. Remember, man is made in three dimensions just like God. God is also in three dimensions like they have the Trinity. So the Father is the Spirit, Jesus the body. And some of you are wondering, so does that mean that the Holy Spirit is the soul? If it's the soul, why is it then called the Holy Spirit? It should be the Holy Soul. <laughs> I don't know, but that's what, that's what he's called. He's called the Holy Spirit. But actually, he's the soul of the Trinity. You know, your soul is where you have emotions and all that. The Holy Ghost is the emotional part of the Godhead. That is why God wants, the Bible wants, don't grieve the Spirit. Because it's emotional. Even God said, anything committed against the Father... Anything committed against the Son will be forgiven you. But anyone committed against the Spirit won't be. Have you ever thought about it? The Holy Spirit is highly melancholy. So you have to be careful on how you treat the Holy Spirit. Apart from being melancholy, He also knows, He's also skilled at healing your soul. So no matter what has happened in your past, you might have been raped severally, you might not have had a father figure in your life. You might have had it so rough in all your, in all your relationships. You might have been physically abused in all your relationships. You might have been told you are not good enough, you are worthless. And somehow you are believing that now. I don't know what may have, might have happened to you in your past relationships. You might have, you might have been carrying the guilt of several abortions that you did and it's like you've been carrying that guilt you're wondering somebody listening to me one of your, your own problem your own world that you need healing over is a portion thing because you 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 keep seeing those children you aborted in your dreams you know you keep seeing them in your dreams so somehow it has it has been so heavy on your on you regret remorse you're feeling so bad some of you are wondering, if I even marry, can I still have kids? Because you you feel Satan has been whispering to you that your womb has been destroyed from the series of abortion. But I'm here to tell you that the Holy Ghost is a lover of your soul. He's a lover of your soul. Maybe you are so promiscuous, you've lost count of the number of men that you let through you. Some guys, the, the guilt of rape too, You've raped a lot of women, you are carrying it. For some guys, yours was just that you 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 could not understand why a man should not go to the prostitute. You visit the brother like no man's business. But that's the weight you're carrying. But there's nothing the Holy Spirit cannot handle once you let him. Once you let the Holy Spirit, he can comfort you, he can suit you. 
in the place of worship and your devotion, you talk to him. He's right on your inside. He said he'll never leave you. He said he'll never forsake you. He will heal the past. He will return you as if nothing happened. That's one of the things, that's one of the things the Holy Ghost does. When the Holy Ghost does his work on you, it's as if you are never hurt. It's as if nothing ever happened. He returns you back to original. He will soothe your soul. He will take the pain away. The Bible says that, that, that there is no fear in love. So once those things are handled, you can love again. A, a, a lot of us are not yet married because those hurts, those pain, those walls, men can see them. Men can see them. When you hang out with them, they can see through through them, through you. They can see those things. You know, you, you may not be able to see it. Like somebody said that attitude can be seen. Let, let, let me also tell you this. I'm sure some of you must have observed it. If you're in a room and a man that is proud walks in, you will know. He has not said anything, but you will know why. There is this air that comes out from him. He can just say, this man is proud. He didn't say anything. Neither was he wearing a placard. Hey, I am proud or I'm arrogant. But you can just see it written all over his face. The way he walks, the way he will look around, the way his nose is pointed in the air. That same way, when you carry all this baggage, when you have all these walls, it can be seen because it affects your relationship with that person. You know, it does. It affects your relationship with that person. And at times, the man will not even want to go on. He'll look for a way out. So, some of the reasons why men also leave you without any reason. And I wonder, what did I say? What did I do? We just went out once, just went out twice, and it just is because he could see those things and he just didn't want to handle it. He just didn't want it. And he just um, gave up on you. There is no fear in love. Once you let the Holy Ghost do his work, he will return you back to status quo. Perfect love casteth out fear because fear had torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Are you seeing it? So, this line, this this point is the 11th principle, character. You watch out for the fruits of the Spirit in that your partner, in that your spouse. And the first, the fruit of the Spirit starts off with love. Love, 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 love. Undying love. Love that is, um, that, that, that gives without any condition. The, that man should love you not based on anything. You should say, I love you because this. Oh, I love you because that. Or she'll say, I love you because this. No. When true love sets in, there is no reason. There are no conditions for true love. So love, and of course, you know the other fruits of the Holy Spirit. Check out for all those things. Now, another thing I want to talk about, which is the fruit of the Spirit, is self-control. Marry a man that has self-control. Marry a woman that has self-control. Naturally, women are gifted with that. The men are not. They need to learn it. Only few men are. Marry a woman that has self-control. Marry a man that has self-control. What will keep a man from being unfaithful to you is a man that has self-control. Is a man that has self-control. He will see that fine woman, can even see her naked, and yet he will decide not to. Another thing you need to look out for in your man is a man that is faithful. The Bible says a faithful man who can find the men. Look out for a woman that has virtue. Virtue. Virtue, very important. What keeps what will keep you, what will keep a man in a relationship is a man of virtue. What, what do you want me to elaborate on? Um, okay, on self-control. Okay. Self-control is very important. Like if you ask my wife now, that's one of the things I'm teaching my boys now. And you'll be like, but well, they are too small. Yes, this is also one of the things that you need to put in them at a young age. Put in them at a young age. You cannot learn self-control as an old man. Because you are set already. You know, those that understand construction, when you when you do pillars, that's some I think the pillar is over there. You notice, even if you can hear the noise, the sound well. As you go down, there's the 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 density of the sound of the knocking is changing. Why? Here there's a hollow here, but down here you are closer, you close the pillar. 
when you cast a pillar, you cast a pillar with steel rods and granite, we call them chippings, with cement. And you put them in that cast for some days. At least you're doing a deck in the, 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 the engineers, that is the structural engineer, tell you, leave the cast of the pillar or the decking for 28 days. That is four weeks at least. So it can set well. And when it sets, to knock it down is difficult. I can break through this wall here, but it will be hard for me to break it through at the pillar's place. So you cannot learn self-control when you are set as an old man. You learn it starting from when you are young, when you are still fresh. The ability to put your body under is a great, great virtue even a man and a woman should have. A woman should have self-control in talking. A lot of women can control. Have self-control in talking and gossiping. Control it. Men control the desires of the flesh. It comes, even to me. It comes to every man. There is ability to control it. That is key. So, for that single lady, these are some of the things you need to look out for in their man. One of the ways to know if you have self-control is with you. You guys are still dating or cutting. What is he doing? Is he constantly wanting to touch your body? Is he constantly telling, talking to you about sex? Ah, we have to sleep together else. So this relationship is going nowhere. Is he so so much? Is, he, is that the only thing he talks about? Your body, your body, your body, your body. There's a song like that. Your body, your body, or something like that. Is that the thing that he's thinking about? That is a warning sign to start with. You don't sleep with your prospective husband. You don't sleep with your prospective wife. If you do, they're going to have trust issues in that marriage. You're going to have serious trust issues in that marriage. Serious one. So you don't, you, you don't even try it. So if that man is constantly wanting to touch your body and do all those things, that means there's a problem with self-control. He should be able to hold himself. He should wait for the package. It should, it should be something he should look forward to. Do you know what? He's going to live with you for the rest of his life. You guys will live together for the rest of your life. If he wants to be doing it every minute, every second, he will have you for the rest of his life. But you know the funny thing? When you now get married, it becomes a problem. Maybe the first few months is, is beautiful, but as you're getting into the sixth month, some people haven't tried six months, you're getting into one year, two years, three years, five years, you will be the one now begging that man to even touch you. You'll be wondering, is this man even now, even, when last did he notice you? He has lost interest. So save your body. So one of the ways to tell if that man has self-control is from your period of courtship and dating. You know, very important. Also look out for a man that is faithful. A faithful man who can find. Very, very important. So these are some of the things you need to watch out for in this character principle. Is the man trustworthy? Carry out trust tests on him. Check if he's trustworthy. If he can be trusted. It can be trusted. Then, thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me this. Is the man forgiving? Is the woman forgiving? There are some women that can carry face. They can hold a grudge. They can bear malice. For one month, that woman has not said one word to you. You guys are living together in the same house. You say, hi, hi honey. Mm. One week, two weeks. These are some of the things you need to watch out for because it will affect your communication. And once your communication starts having small problem, it becomes a big problem. So, is the man tender-hearted? Can easily forgive you when you even if I've wronged him? How easily can he or she forgive you? Also, check that. Very, very important. Another thing you need to check, very important, is, is that man violent? Or is that woman violent? From sitting on the seat of, of, of a counselor when it comes to relationships, I've seen a lot of cases of women being violent on their husbands. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They want to talk about domestic violence. Automatically, what we think about is the man beating up the woman. I've seen the reverse. It is the woman beating the man. Beating the man. And all that. You know? So, you need to also check. Is the man violent? Is he hot-tempered? Is he always getting annoyed? Any small thing triggers... His annoyance, that is a red flag. It's a red flag. It's a red flag. That means that man, presuming he's born again, that the Holy Ghost has not fully worked on him. You see me? I had a problem with anger. Oh, yes. People that know me now, when I talk about this, can't reconcile it because they can't truly believe that I used to have a problem with anger. Yes, I used to get angry to the extent 
that I fall ill. I start feeling unwell. I fall, I think that night I'll be feverish. I'll have headache. Yeah. I get so angry that my whole body shakes. I vibrate, my whole body shake. I shake and vibrate. Yeah, I have a problem with that. But what happened? When I got introduced to worship and the presence of the Lord, if I knew it, it disappeared. Because you can't hang out with the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost will not work. Will not work on you. It's impossible. Yeah, yeah. You can't. The Bible says, as we behold him, as in the glass, face to face, that we are changed into that image. You cannot have a relationship with God and the Holy Ghost and you don't. You are not changed into God's image. Yeah, the Bible says that those that worship idols will look like them. And that is the truth. So if you worship God, before long, you will be like God. You start looking and acting and thinking like Him. As I can ask my wife, one of my modus operandi is I obey the scripture to the letter. If she wants to win an argument with me, she has to show it to me in the Bible. Once it's in the Bible, I give up, I give in. I do. That's one of my modus operandi, one of my motives of life, to be word-based in everything I do. So once you start having, so once you start having that kind of attitude, you will start becoming a better person. You know, so watch out for those things. I think I should stop here. We'll continue tomorrow by 10 30. Now, another thing you need to also check, women, very important, thank God I remembered, is does the man do what he says? Yeah. Does he keep his word? Those things he promised you that he will do, does he keep his word? It's something you need to watch out for. Does the man do what he says? Does the man do what he says? Does he keep his word? So watch out for that. And many others, you know, tomorrow I'll give you more. So don't miss tomorrow, tomorrow 10.30. But by God's grace, I believe we'll get to the point of compatibility. We need to look at compatibility. The different kinds of compatibility. Intellectual, emotional, social, and many others. <laughs>